Hello, everyone. This is Steve Zerker. Welcome back to our show, Looking to the East. Uh, it's been a month or so since we've been on air. Over the holidays, we took a break. Uh, so welcome, and uh, I'm back. I'm very happy to be back on the air again and uh, to share with you a discussion with one of my friends here in Japan and a very interesting person who's developed an international law career. Um, <clears throat> so my special guest today, you can see him there, is Jiri Maseki. And uh, let oh. me give you a brief background, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, about Jiri. He is uh, a partner at a Japanese law firm here in the Osaka, Kansai area. Uh, to my knowledge, he's the only foreigner who's achieved that level of success in this region, that is to be a partner for a major law firm. He joined Kitahama Partners in 2003. And uh, before that, he actually practiced law in the United States uh, for a number of years. So he has experience in practicing law in the United States, as well as a, a long period of time practicing in Japan as well, which is going to be the heart of what we talk about in this program. This program is looking to the law. So as uh, my viewers know, we often take a look at cross-cultural issues between the United States and Japan, sometimes political, uh, educational, and so forth. Today, we're going to be looking at that same type of thing, but through the filter or lens of, of uh, law. <clears throat> Okay, so um, his, his academic background, he has a JD and MA from the Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, before that, he studied in Japan at a Japanese university, Kobe University. Um, so uh, he was a research student there uh, for a number of months back uh, in 1995. So very, very fortunate. Thank you very much, Jiri, for joining us today. You look very laurely, laurely, if I can say that properly, with your tie on there and everything. Thank you are, very are you much. Going into yeah. the office today, the or are you on. working at home? Yeah, no, I, I am uh, going to be uh, teleworking today, but okay. uh, you know, I have to wear the uniform for uh, again Zoom meetings and and uh, things like that, meetings with with uh, you know clients and other people. Sure, sure. Uh, how much of your work now is is on Zoom? I guess uh, like the rest of us, I'm teaching 100% online now. Right. So, are you at that level as well? And 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 have you found kind of not getting into the main issue here? Have you found it difficult to carry out your business activities, your legal activities over Zoom as opposed to face to face, which I, I know in Japan is the preferred method of interaction for sure. Right. Um, you know, I, I guess the, the, the first question there, I am working probably, I don't know, one to two days teleworking. I am trying, you know, to uh, be in the office again, maybe two to three uh, days per week. It really just depends. You know, uh, here in Japan, as you know, uh, Steve, we, we uh, may be entering uh, soon again into a state of emergency. In that case, I'll mm -hmm. be probably mostly teleworking. But right now, one to two days uh, per week and, I'll, and maybe two or three days um, uh, in the office. Okay. Uh, as far as, you know, my job and is it easy or not, I would, it, it's, I'll be honest, I, it's, it's actually much easier than I would have predicted. Uh, really? You wow. You told me uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning, um, you know, of, of uh, you know, 2020 that, you know, I would be spending, you know, uh, nine months or so uh, teleworking. I would have said, wow, that's going to be extremely difficult. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But it's actually turned out to be, I mean, technology has really saved us uh in in many in many in many industries and um you know i i it, it's amazing that that we've been able to carry out you know the law firm is busy we have plenty of work and you know we're we're mostly able to do what we need to do so you can close contracts and negotiate deals and so forth absolutely and you're not impeded by the fact that you're talking to people through like we are right now through zoom no no i yeah Exactly. I mean, handling the matters, uh, you know, legal work is very often very document intensive. So that, you mm -hmm. know, often goes through email or having meetings, conferences through, uh, you know, uh, a Zoom or wh whatever service. The, the, the other thing that is, is, is somewhat impeded, I guess, would be negotiations. I mean, negotiation, as you know, here in Japan is often done best uh, face to face and, Absolutely. you know, uh, courts you know sometimes hearings get delayed uh things of that nature but but, but overall we've, we've we've been able to to you know uh, 
work work well. I, I mean, I can't imagine if this had happened, what, 10, 15 years ago, it would have been a completely different story. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the, the heart of the show here and talk about how, how you actually developed your career. I, it's very interesting to look at your background. I, thought, I Actually, I forgot the most important thing about your background, and that was that you were a Kansai Gaidai exchange student. I was, I was in indeed. D yeah, so did you know that you wanted to do this, like coming out of high school or going into college? Can you talk about how you developed your career? Because I'm sure there may be some viewers who would be interested in, in having an international law career like you've been able to successfully do. Sure. So uh, my first uh, experience uh, is a, a, in law or with law, uh, there have been previously no, no, no lawyers in my family. I'm, I'm the first uh, a lawyer in my family. But uh, you know, the way I developed an interest was uh, actually in high school. My first year in high school, I was in our history class and my professor or the teacher uh, back then uh, decided that uh, we were going to do a trial for Alexander the Great, you know, the, the famous uh, 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 Greek. And basically, I was asked to defend Alexander the Great, which at the class at the time was considered extremely difficult. Uh, Alexander was uh, quite a brutal fellow uh, when he wanted to be. Uh, mm -hmm. And and a long story short, we won the trial, uh, so, oh. so to speak. Oh, absolutely. It was it was a, it was a thrill. So. Uh, from that point so on, you, I thought, wow. You, you recognize you have the talent to convince I people. Well, I recognize that this is something I could I could want to put, you know, time and effort into. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of knew that I wanted to be uh, a lawyer from a relatively early age, I guess, high school. At the same time, I was interested in Japanese. I studied Japanese, started studying it seriously when I was uh, 16 years old and uh, majored in Japanese uh, in, in at uh, University of Florida. Uh, had a had a major there, and at the same time, of course, with the eye toward going to law school, uh, and uh, you know, I I as as my studies went on, particularly in university, I became you know a little bit torn. I was like, well, gosh, do I want to you know go ahead and get a PhD in, in East Asian studies? I studied primarily literature, Japanese literature, and um, you know, I I uh, uh, got through uh, college. Uh, graduated with a degree in East Asian studies, then went uh, to Japan, worked for a year for a design consulting firm, uh, developed an interest in intellectual property, which is the area I practice now. Uh, and then uh, went to Washington University, as you mentioned earlier, in St. Louis. And I, I went there because they have a, had a very unique uh, program, it's the JD or the law degree, along with uh, a master's in, in East Asian studies. And so uh, I went there uh, and uh, graduated and as a result of that, I was able to, uh, as you mentioned earlier, study at Kobe University. Uh, and then after graduating law school, uh, I worked for a firm in Chicago. I'm registered in the state of Illinois as an attorney and also as a registered foreign attorney in Japan. And, uh, you know, worked now, in- Jerry, uh, that was a Japanese yeah. law firm. Were, were you, while you were working there, were you working on domestic cases or also cases involving Japan or both? Well, it was an American law. It, it's a Masuda for Night for Mitchell. It's, oh, it's a, oh, okay. It was founded thought... by Japanese Americans, but it was it's an American law firm based oh, I see. in Chicago okay. uh, that handles, uh, that specialize in Japanese uh, clients and Japan, Japan related matters. So yes, I, to answer your question, yes, I did uh, work on a lot of Japan related matters and was able to use my Japanese language ability and, you know, um, always knew that, you know, I eventually wanted to end up back in Japan at some point. So after working uh, you know, for a number of years there in Chicago uh, from Suda Funai, I uh, worked uh, in or uh, came to Kitahama Partners. And incidentally, I, I had been at Kitahama Partners as an intern, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during, during the uh, uh, Kobe uh, earthquake, that was 95 when I was at Kobe University. So I'd known this firm and, and came back uh, in 2003 and have been here uh, ever since. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Um, so you have obvious experience in working as a lawyer in the United States and right. for the firm in Chicago that you just talked about. And now many, many years of working at Kitahama Parker Partners, which has it, I, I, is an international firm as well. You have offices in the United States and other well, locations. Well, no, well. no, we we have uh, domestic. Our, our our offices are in our main offices in Osaka. We also have an office in Tokyo, and we have an office in Fukuoka. We don't have offices outside of Japan, 
Uh, oh, nonetheless, okay. well, we do have, you know, of course, a, a broad uh, uh, network of, of international firms in various countries throughout the world with whom we work. Oh, okay. So given that background, what, what is your assessment of the practice of law in the United States versus Japan? Is it really dramatically different? I know when I did my doctorate degree, which was on the deployment of electronic medical records in Korea, Japan, and the United States, I didn't know this going in, but I discovered that the practice of medicine was completely different in the United States and Japan and in Korea. For example, what would be diagnosed as a disease in the United States would not be considered a disease in Japan, you know, things like that. So I'm sure. curious to find out if law is similar. Is it really quite different because of cultural differences in the United States and Japan, or, or is there more commonality through international law? Certainly. Uh, you know, I, I think um, like the practice of medicine, the, the practice of law is rather diverse, right? You have various areas, you have various types of, of, of uh, you know, clients, industries, uh, of course, the legal, substantive legal areas themselves. So it's, it's a diverse uh, profession. Um, you know, basically the way that, that lawyers uh, are, that you can think about lawyers are transactional lawyers. Uh, and then lawyers who engage in dispute, you know, resolution, people who do litigation, uh, things of that nature. So um, I do uh, do some, uh, you know, dispute resolution, primarily in the area of arbitration. But my primary uh, work is in transactional law. So that is commercial contracts. Or, you know, I, again, I do a lot of intellectual property. So licensing agreements, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly in the international context, you know, there are firms like mine in various countries around the world that were, who have lawyers who also do the same thing. I, I will say that, you know, it, at least as far as the, the transactional practice, there are a large number uh, of similarities. I mean, I'm doing a, a, a lot of the same work now or have been doing a lot of the same work for almost 20 years here in Japan that I was doing back when I was in Chicago which is again, counseling clients with regard to contracts, drafting contracts, uh, you know, assisting them in negotiations uh, and, you know, advocating, uh, you know, on, on their behalf. So that, that is very similar. I, I, I think that the, the legal context, the professions are, 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 are somewhat different. Uh, you know, so if, if the work is similar, the professional context may be a, a little bit different. Again, uh, certainly compared, you know, to my home country, the, you know, the, the uh, uh, United States uh, and the city in which I work, Chicago, I mean, um, the scale of the profession. So there are far fewer lawyers in Japan, certainly per capita. Than why is that, Jerry? Why, why are there far fewer lawyers in Japan as opposed to the United States? You know, I, I, various reasons. I think that First of all, historically, really uh, until about the last decade or so, passing the, the, the bar exam uh, in Japan was incredibly difficult. It was 3%. It was some, you know, wow. something like that. It was incredible. So the bar to entry, even for students from extremely, you know, prestigious universities uh, was, it was extremely high. You know, the average bar rates in the United States are, you know, around 70 some odd percent, 60, 70, oh. maybe a little bit lower now. But the barriers to entry. Uh, also, Japanese don't use lawyers as much, just culturally, uh, or historically, they have in any way, uh, as as for example, Americans do. Uh, another reason is that the legal profession in Japan consists not only of lawyers. You know, in the United States, for example, let's say you want to be a uh, a patent lawyer. So again, I I do IP. You take your bar, you go to law school, you take your bar exam like everyone else. There's another additional exam. But, you know, here in Japan, a patent attorney is a, a completely different profession. Mm. Uh, it, it, they have their own licensure. Uh, they have their own tests. It, it's, a, it's a completely, it's, it's a, so, so it's, it, it's most more stratified. So, you know, for example, again, uh, in the United States, you're, you're a lawyer will do, for example, your incorporation of your company. In Japan, it's very rare uh, to have a lawyer do your incorporation. That is done by a judicial scrivener, which is a different sort of legal professional with a different test and a different. So, so you know, I, I if if you you know the legal the number of attorneys is smaller. I guess if you if you broaden that out, the legal profession actually in Japan may be quite large, but the number of lawyers, you know, at least as compared to a country like the United States, is is rather small.
Do, do you think, um, or has it been your experience that in Japan, because it, it, there's more sense of community, that uh, when you are involved in a dispute, uh, the likelihood of a negotiated outcome is higher than it would be potentially in the United States? Or maybe to reverse that question, do more of like an IP dispute, do more IP disputes end up in court in the United States as opposed to Japan? Is there a distinction there at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think, and, and certainly the, the uh, statistics would bear it out, that, that uh, Japanese are far less litigious uh, than, than uh, again, the United States. However, uh, again, to put that in context, I don't know that the United States may it might not be Japan that is the outlier so much internationally. Maybe the United States <laughs> uh, that that, yeah. that that is the outlier. I think you know, but again, even even in a litigious country like the United States, the, I mean, most people, most clients, if they can, do not want uh, you know to litigate. the 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 whole goal is to when you do have a dispute, is to settle it amicably. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, um, as you know, Steve, from being in Japan a long time, Japan or Japan or Japanese culture uh, is 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 one that fosters that sort of of uh, uh, you know a negotiated settlement, uh, not uh, going as far as uh, you know litigation, trying to trying to settle it, uh, you know, through through uh, amicable means as opposed to. A litigation or, or arbitration or others. Is the view, do you think in Japan with your clients and based on your experience, if you do end up in court that somehow there's been a failure? I mean, that's, that's, that somehow you haven't been able to do what is normally done and you end up in court and both sides of the, of the conflict or would be viewed harshly. It's like, why, why couldn't you work this out? Why are you in court at this point? I mean, well, that, States, I mean yeah. I'm not a lawyer, but I, you know, for, I've been through watching TV and so forth and all the law programs for me it's like hey great they're in court it's going to be like you did jerry when you were in high school you know the the victory right. and so forth <laughs> right, so right. what do you think in japan it, is, it, is a perception that if you are in court that uh, it's been some kind of failure in the normal process that really depends i you know so okay. for example uh in the in intellectual property context if uh, someone is infringing, uh, you know, my clients, uh, you know, trademarks, copyrights, patents, et cetera, you want to immediately go to court uh, in order to have that oh, stop as soon as I possible. Um, so, no, that's not considered a failure. That's really considered what you're what you should be doing uh, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I, I, I do think, however, that, you know, um, really among the parties, I, I don't know societally, but but certainly among the parties. Um, if they've had, for example, a, you know, multi-year relationship that they've been, you know, working together, things are going great. And all of a sudden there is a dispute. I think it, it would be considered kind of a, you know, a, a failure of the people in charge, uh, that they end up in court. I mean, normally if you have a, a long-term good solid relationship with someone else and, and, uh, you have to resolve your differences in court, that's, that's not, you know, uh, that's not seen as, is 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 really uh, ideal, certainly. Mm -hmm. So uh, without disclosing any names, is there maybe a, a case that you've worked on either in the United States or perhaps in Japan that you could highlight and talk about how you were involved between these two different cultures, the United States law culture and the Japanese law culture? Anything come to mind, Jerry? Uh, certainly. So, you know, for example, I'll, I'll go back, maybe not to a transactional case, but, but a, uh, an arbitration. Okay, so uh, our, our, for those who, who may not know, our arbitration is a is a form of dispute resolution, which is again outside the courts. It's a private form of dispute resolution where you basically have an arbitrator who acts as kind of like a private judge or a panel of arbitrators, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, it's run under the auspices of arbitration organizations that exist in various countries. So here in Japan, the JCAA, Japan Commercial Arbitration, the United States, AAA, American Arbitration. So various organizations, you know, uh, run or, or conduct arbitration proceedings on behalf of parties who wish to resolve disputes. So um, I was involved in one uh, here in Japan a number of years ago, and it was on behalf of an American client uh, who was in the video game uh, industry 
uh, who, yeah, it was in the video game industry who was working on or working with a company in China uh, to develop a, an online game uh, that was also partnering with a major Japanese uh, video game manufacturer. And so it was a sort of a triangular uh, dispute, if you will. Uh, and, wow, um, sounds complicated, you know, Jerry. Well, it's, it, it was. <laughs> so, so then you have Chinese yeah. law, which I'm sure is different from Japanese law. And Well, you know, here, here's the thing. This is, this, is where, this is where the transactional side of it did come into play, of course, between the, the parties. Uh, there was an agreement, and the agreement was governed uh, by Japanese law, and everyone had agreed to arbitration ah, okay. in Japan. Right. So that, you know, that's some, one of the great things about arbitration is that it is very uh, flexible. Uh, in the sense that uh, you, you know, if it's in court, you have, you know, you can't choose the date you go to court. You can't choose your judge. You certainly in the United States can't choose a jury, for example. The great thing about arbitration is the parties can, it's very flexible. So, you know, for, for your garden variety, uh, commercial disputes, arbitration is always uh, recommended because again, you can choose the language, you can choose the arbitrators, you can choose the venue, you can choose the time. And so all that was decided according to contract uh, and uh, you know, it ended up in Japan, and therefore our firm, our firm was hired, and therefore I was I was working on it with my colleagues, and mm -hmm. um, you know th that was a really interesting case because that really brought you know you, you 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 we got to see how the Japanese system, uh, particularly Japanese arbitrators, uh, handled this confluence of you know uh, <laughs> Japanese client, you know, on, on a major uh, Japanese company on the one side versus, mm -hmm. you know, a major Japanese law firm, you know, my firm representing a foreign client I see. Uh, with most of the evidence of what actually happened in the case coming from China. Oh my God. So, so it was, you know, it was a very interesting case. And, you know, I think that, you know, Japan, uh, you know, uh, fairly unfairly has often, gotten a reputation of, well, not really being good at handling, the, you know, domestically anyway, these sorts of, you know, international problems, disputes, you know, et cetera. And, you know, uh, Japan homogeneous society, you know, not as used to international this, not as used to international that. But, mm -hmm. but what I uh, found was that the, um, the uh, authorities here and the system worked very well, were very oh, smoothly. There, yeah, no, no real language issues, which is often cited as the biggest problem. The mm -hmm. uh, good arbitrator, um, and you know, we, we got a favorable result. Uh, that that's another reason, I guess, why. Were you as happy with the result of that as a high school case? Pardon? Were you as happy as uh, your high school experience with the outcome? I, you know, that's a tough one, Steve. <laughs> oh, no, that is your first I mean, one. I, I guess know. the first one's always the most important. Getting off Alexander the Great. Is, I mean, <laughs> you, you don't. I don't, I don't know if you can get much better than that, Steve. All right. So I, we're, we're running a little bit low on time. There's a couple other things sure. I wanted to address. Um, often on this show, in fact, uh, the, the whole impetus of the show, uh, and Jay Fidel, he's the one who runs this, that he and I met in Hawaii, uh, was to take a look at uh, the political influence of the United States on Japanese business activity and so forth. So uh, Jay, in particular, is very interested in how the sure. rest of the world perceives what's going on in the United States. You and I, Jiri, both know. Uh, I know my own family, my, my son reads about what goes on. The, sometimes he knows more about the internal politics of the United States than I do as an American. Right. Uh, of course, right. he's, he's American, but he's also, he's raised primarily here in Japan. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see, Jiri, what you think about, uh, not, not so much on the political side, but uh, more about you, the, your practice and how the last four years under the Trump administration has impacted, if at all, uh, international negotiations, international arbitration, and so forth, or just generally how your profession is perceived uh, based on what's gone on in the last four years, because Trump has focused some of his attention on Asia specifically. Right. Um, well, you know, first, you know, maybe I'll take the, the end of that question first. Um, it, you know, as far as how the the uh, the uh, profession is perceived, and again, maybe this goes back to one of your earlier questions. The perception, I think, of lawyers uh, in Japan is quite different uh, from from the United States. Uh, so, in in you know, here in Japan, lawyers are uh, sensei, right? Very very learned profession and extremely highly 
are respected, not that lawyers aren't respected in the United States, but that lawyers in the United States are seen primarily as count as you know counselors, uh, you know, um, people who who uh, basically provide consulting services, like your accountant, like you know, there there are a number of uh, consultants from the business from the client or business perspective. Here in Japan, again, you're a sensei. It's a much higher uh, mm. level of, of social prestige. So, for example, here in Japan, lawyers wear badges. You'll often see, and I, as a registered foreign attorney, also have a badge mm. uh, that you know people wear. You know uh, where, where they go in court. And I, I would have never uh, worn a badge in Chicago saying I am a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have done that. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, I, right. So. Um, there's that. I mean, there is there is a different level as far as, you know, uh, the perception uh, of, of, of the profession. As far as the effect on, on you know, maybe particularly the Trump administration uh, on, you know, the law there, I, I don't think that there has been um, a huge influence as far as the actual work or the conduct, you know, how contracts are done or anything. I think that when, when uh, 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 President Trump came in, People originally thought that he was going to be extremely good for business. Uh, he developed actually a quite a good relationship with former Prime Minister Abe. Um, so I think that things, you know, started out well. And and but unfortunately, however, I think you know as, as things have devolved, um, the perception of of sort of the I don't know the legal profession, but maybe the United States as a whole has dropped somewhat. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, as a result of of you know the uh, current instability um, nationally that's been going on for 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 a bit now. Uh, so you know I think the I don't know that the perception of law, but but certainly the perception. And again, we as lawyers, and, and you know this as well too, Steve. You know we are part of the larger um, you know a business community uh, or American business community here in Japan. Of course. And and our and our uh, overall. Uh, uh, image i think has unfortunately uh not been helped uh mm. by by events uh that are going on in politics uh in the united states well <clears throat> i'll have to have you on uh, later jury and uh, under the new administration in the united states see if hopefully the, that that damage has been repaired somewhat and the general business conditions or business perception improves we're certainly hopeful that that will be the case Absolutely. We, we've run out of time. You know, uh, I, again, it just has flown by. I didn't get to some of the questions I wanted to ask you. <laughs> oh, well. So I will have to have you back. But thank you so much no for sharing your experience. For those of you that are watching, I hope this provides an inspiration to maybe some of our younger viewers to take up law as a career and focus on international business. Obviously, Jiri made a big investment in learning Japanese and living in Japan. I would also recommend, I recommend to my students that if they're serious about cross-cultural professional jobs that they need to study abroad and study the language and so forth. So, Jerry, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Yes, thank you. Really appreciate thank you it. Very and much. to my viewers, I'll see you in a couple of weeks and we'll have another interesting topic to cover looking to the East. Hey, thank you everyone.